It was the game that finally went so far that gamers had had enough. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is so bad, is so DEI riddled that the only thing that it killed was enthusiasm for Oh Sweet Baby. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are happy to have each and every one of you out there with us today. We are here to talk about a movement that was created by Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League when the creators decided to partner with Sweet Baby and an ecosystem, apparently, of DEI invaders. And now, as a result, well, the entire industry is under the microscope. We're going to talk about it. We've got Cabrutus with us. He is leading the charge with DEI detected. Folks, here we go. DLC seems to be dying to DEI. Who would have ever thought it? <laughs> Certainly not I. Here's the article out of thatparkplace.com, the little website shaking up the internet. John Trent, who's that? Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Joker DLC, that's downloadable content, appears to flop with concurrent players peaking at just 3,000 on Steam. Rocksteady releases their first DLC for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League that features the Joker, and it appears to have been a complete flop based on concurrent Steam players. Rocksteady announced their first free content update that includes a new take on the iconic supervillain Joker. It also introduces a new map that players can explore during Incursion and Mayhem Mission. Rocksteady shared that the map is a version of Metropolis, infected with the twisted and warped mind of the Joker, creating a darkly comic reflection of the city of tomorrow. It's only too sad. It's going to be very sparsely populated. All right, so there's the Joker, folks. We're not going to play it, but that's the look. That's the new look. That's what they've came up with. Oh, sweet baby, does it look bad? Let's go ahead and uh, get the panel's thoughts on this. Cabrutus, you've been leading the charge. I'll let you lead the panel today. Why do you think that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has itself been killed? Um, hello, hello, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for the invitation. It is a pleasure to be here, be able to talk to you guys. And yeah, talking about this game, um, I always say when people ask me, I, I say that, yeah, maybe it is a, I think it would be a bad game even without Sweet Baby involvement. You know, I, I think that this game would not succeed even if Sweet Baby was, invo was, was not involved with it. But Sweet Baby, uh, uh, Sweet Baby's work is what made people hate this game, you know? Because if it wasn't by the way they treated Batman, what they did with Poison Ivy, for example, and, you know, um, Flash dying, and I forgot the name of that villain, like, pissing, peeing on his body, you know? This kind of stuff. Boomerang. Boomerang, yeah, sorry. I mean, I'm not very much into superheroes, so I'm sorry. Um, I'm just saying that... Uh, if it wasn't by this, people would just look at this game and think to themselves, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's just a bad game. We have many bad games getting released on a yearly basis. People would just look at it, look at it and move on, you know? But no, no, after what Sweet Baby did in the, with this game, this is why people started hating it. And this is what inspired me to create my, my creator page. Cabrutus, what are you saying? Interesting... This is the this is the specific game that inspired you to create Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. Yes, um, I, 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 I mean, I was already aware of Sweet Baby's work uh, since 2022 when God of War Ragnarok came out. That was the first time I, you know, heard about Sweet Baby, and I, you know. I got into. I, I went to the website for the first time, so I, I already knew who they were, who they were, you know. But when this game got released, I saw a lot of people um, really pissed, angry, because I, I don't know if you guys remember, but when this game was about to release, there was a bug that you could go directly right into the end of the game. Then people saw what happened to Batman, you know. Then that's that's the reason everything started, you know. Um, People started like saying lots of bad stuff about this game online. Yeah, so and and I just thought to myself, um, I I gotta do something, you know. I, I just gotta do something, and I I already followed a 
creator page on Steam called the Nouveau Games that essentially does the same thing, but for games with the Nouveau, you know. And I just thought to myself, maybe if I, you know, imagine if someone created a creator page look just like this one, but for Sweet Baby Games. And I went to the paint, made the first, you know, logo. I googled on how to create a creator page because I had no idea on how, and I did it. Well said on all parts. Let, let me bounce this off to uh, Cabrutus because, mm. Cabrutus, there's a lot that's been said. One of the most fascinating things that I've heard you talk about is that gaming started off in a very diverse way because gaming began not only in America but also in Japan. And you made reference mm -hmm. on the Renegade Online show on Sunday to Super Street Fighter 2 or even just Street Fighter 2, but Super Street Fighter 2 is even a, a better uh, indicator, of course, made in Japan, made by Capcom, and uh, just an incredibly diverse roster, a roster that would leave many games today feeling jealous. And nobody batted an eye. We loved it. I mean, look at you had lines in arcades for people wanting to play it, right? And maybe they didn't want to play with T Hawk, but that's because darn it, he had a worse play set than, than Zangief. Okay, it had a, nothing to do with his ethnicity. I was the used Brutus to Ryu. <laughs> it's Ryu. It's not Ryu. Come on, Jonas. You know this, Cabrutus. <laughs> Talk to us about um, talk to us about why this was unnecessary. Uh, this idea that we had to diversify games. Talk to us about what gaming was when it was great. Uh, well, that's that's a, that's a really great example. Yeah, I'm Street Fighter Two. I'm I think Street Fighter Two highlights pretty well uh, diversity in gaming. You know and they bring this i think it is about uh creating a problem that doesn't exist so they can sell the solution you know they try to make people believe not 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 the gaming not only the gaming uh the gamers in general but also the companies believe that there is not enough um there is not enough diversity in gaming you know so they can sell the the solution and yeah, I mean, gaming has always been very very diverse. Uh, as a Brazilian, I can say that Japanese people has always represented us in video games since the early nineties in a very beautiful way. There are lots of Brazilian video game characters that are beloved here in Brazil, and personally, I love many video game characters that are from our own the world, you know, and. Yeah, that, especially if you if you look at at fighting games, because fighting games they need to be diverse, because otherwise they won't be interesting, you know. Because you gotta have different characters, you gotta have a different rooster of characters. So, so yeah, this is why I always like to use fighting games a, as an example, and and they they it, it's it's ironic because the games that they I mean those. DI companies they they work on are way less diverse than those you know old school games that I, I like talking about. In fact, my community is way more diverse than any one of those gaming outlets out there. You know, any one of those consultation companies. I am hundred percent sure of this. We have people from all around the world, all kinds of sexualities, um, all kinds of races. You know, religion beliefs, political beliefs. I have people leftists, you know, in my in my group that they agree with me. They are, you know, with me in this. It's kind of, you know, um, it's amazing. I, I think it's. I think we are seeing something really, really unique, um, in, uh, right now um, in the gaming history, you know, or internet history, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy to have had you with us today. An honor, a pleasure, and of course, as always, an attitude of gratitude here on the Pro Channel each and every time you elect to spend your time with us. Folks, on the way out the door, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. And on your way out, don't forget to drop a comment. We would love to hear your thoughts. We read them. We pay attention. Share this out on your favorite social medias, and folks, we will continue to share everything we know as we endeavor to explain entertainment and keep you ahead of the culture curve. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.